big point of the last chapter was that if the number of firms is limited, then the demand curve would be downward sloping for that firm, and the marginal benefits curve would be also downward sloping. In this chapter, we're going to use the same setup with a downward sloping demand curve and a downward sloping marginal benefit curve, but the source is different. Instead of thinking about a limited number of firms, we're going to think about markets that we encounter really every day. When you go to the store and you look at the shelf for coffee, you're going to see a lot of different brands of coffee. And many of you are going to have strong opinions about which brand you like. Whenever it matters to you whose stuff you buy, the demand curve facing that firm's not going to be completely flat. If you don't view different kinds of coffee as being perfect substitutes, then you're probably willing to pay a little bit more for your favorite coffee, even if the manufacturer raises its price a little bit. So we have lots of producers of coffee, so in some sense it's a competitive market, but they're not selling identical products. We're going to call these kinds of markets monopolistic competition. Monopolistic to reflect the fact that your favorite producer has some sway over you and therefore doesn't have a perfectly flat demand curve for his product. But there are some close substitutes. So unlike a monopolist, they're not going to have quite, the monopolistic competitor is not going to have quite the same kind of influence. Here we're going to see that the forces of entry and exit are going to allow consumers to get more out of these markets than would happen in monopoly situations.